What the hell is this? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Jackie O. Jagga 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 jagga. I got a Glock in my Rari. No, just kidding. Actually, I have a full box worth of Milani stuff that I ordered like maybe two weeks ago. I want to say it was like ten days ago. Today we're going to be trying out the full range of Milani makeup products, which the grand total ended up coming out to, it was $450. And to me, that for some drugstore, that's kind of a lot, but that's also obviously significantly less than if I was doing like a NARS or like a full face of Lancome, which easily could be like a thousand dollars up. Milani is actually one of the top five brands that I would say you guys have been requesting for me to do a full face tutorial for quite some time now. And I do really like Milani stuff. I do feel like they're kind of like the bougier side of the drugstore. So let's just, let's just dive in, okay? Now, before we do get started, make sure you are hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss checking I can upload. You just, you can't afford to not miss my uploads because we just be spilling all the tea and giving you all the realness around here. Okay, so from top to bottom, let's find out how good this Milani stuff really is because it looks pretty, but I'm just hoping that everything holds up as pretty as it looks. First, I'm gonna start with the Prime Shield face primer. This is supposed to be a mattifying primer and because we are gonna be using the Milani foundation, then what better way to get the most out of it than by using it with a Milani primer. Don't judge the forehead. I burnt myself with my flat iron the other day. Okay, this primer reminds me of the Frito-Lay bag. You know when it's it feels more empty than it does full? Milani, what y'all doing at the factory, okay? Like, is this really 0.68 fluid ounces? I'm just wondering. I do think I've used this primer before. I don't think I liked it though. I think it might have been the foundation that I used it with. This primer says it's oil free, it's mattifying, it minimizes pores, fine lines, it's lightweight, and it's non greasy. I can definitely say. It doesn't feel greasy. By the way, I did wanna mention they gave me free samples. I don't know how much you have to spend on the website to qualify for free samples, but I thought that was kinda nice. I mean, thanks, good looking out guys. Samples are great, everybody loves free samples, just saying. I feel like this is one of the most controversial foundations on the market. People either really, really like it or they love it. Oh wait, this is sick. People either really like this foundation or they don't like it at all. I've actually had these for a while, never got a chance to try them, Just they just didn't scream at me for some reason. It's the Conceal in Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation Plus Concealer. I bought a few colors and I do have to say I was not particularly impressed with their deeper dark range. And that's the thing with Milani, sometimes I feel like they pick and choose when they want their stuff to be diverse. Like I remember a long time ago they had their cream to powder foundation and it came in like every shade in the planet, or at least at one point it did. And, and now I feel like that slowly but surely they've been hitting the mark with their shades. So Milani, clean it up, Catherine, okay? I got four shades. Here's Golden Toffee. Here's Golden Toffee, which is pretty deep. Or I remember swatching Chestnut and this being it, so let's see how she looks again. Here's Chestnut number 13 and Golden Toffee number 14. We got we got room for a middle child. You know, we got room for one more in between there. So this jump, we could fix it. And then 12 is Spiced Almond. Oh, these are like three completely different colors. So it looks like I'm actually probably more along the lines of Spiced Almond. The depth of this foundation looks right, but the undertone doesn't. Here's golden tan. It's a highlight shade. Let's just go with Spiced Almond. Who is walking on my roof? Am I the only person who didn't know Milani had brushes? I didn't know they had brushes. I picked up their foundation brush while I was at it because I was like, hey, why not? I'll take one for the team. All right, so we're going in with Spiced Almond today. I'm gonna start off with one pump and hopefully we can get it to cover Camilla up here. She, no one invited her. I'm already not happy. Mm -mm. I feel like this is the story of every dark skinned girl's life. Okay, let me just calm down. Maybe it's adjusting, maybe I can fix it. Let's just go in. The brush is nice though, ooh. Brush is feeling real soft, moving around real nice. And this is blending out very quickly. I can't tell if I'm smelling the brush or the foundation, but it smells good. Coverage is definitely A1, cause it's covering up all my scars. Okay, so the color actually ended up not being too bad. And I do want a little bit more coverage. It's also really hard covering a burn because it's it's got a different skin texture than your actual skin. 
So everything just kind of slides off, which is really annoying. Okay, so my thoughts on the foundation so far is that it's actually not that it's too pink. I just feel like it's a little neutral. I would love to see a little bit more gold in there just to warm me up a little bit. I have two concealers that I wanted to try. One of which, now that I see it in person, I actually, I don't know, I'm not that impressed. It's the Secret Cover. Let me take the shrink wrap off. This is the Secret Color Concealer. Again, these colors are so weird. Like they run pink and I notice from color to color, they jump really drastically. I've never seen this concealer. I've never heard anyone talk about it or feature it before. So I'm assuming maybe it's just not one of their top sellers. The consistency reminds me a lot of the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. It kind of has like a really, Actually, I'm not mad at the texture at all. It's like a velvety smooth finish. This is deep tan, and then the one above it is tan. So tan looks like a decent, pretty decent highlight shade. I'm gonna just give it a shot, give it a go. They have a concealer and precise blending brush. I'm gonna try to use that and put that to the test. This is really soft. This actually looks like the perfect brush for this kind of concealer. So I'm just gonna swirl it around. You do have to kind of warm up this product a little bit to kind of get it to move. She's so thick. And the coverage actually isn't bad. I'm over here checking my second mirror, kind of impressed. I'm getting like NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. And I'm also kind of getting some MAC Studio Fix Concealer vibes from this. And I think I'm gonna try another concealer on top. So now I'm also gonna use this to highlight. So starting right in the center of my five head, wide in my five head. Wide in that face shape. I remember when I used to only use pink concealers. Literally, when I worked at MAC, they told us that only give people NW concealers for the under eye because no one uses NCs. And now that I look back at that, I'm like, who told y'all that? Like, where'd y'all get that law? Who who wrote that law? I don't got nothing to contour with. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this is honey, and this is just about my foundation shade. So. That's a pass on contouring. Since I don't have anything, I'm just gonna use a little bit of my black opal foundation. And like I said, I don't know what happened, but I'm like pretty positive. At one point, Milani had some cream to powder foundations that were dark enough for me to contour. Now that I'm blending out this concealer, it's not the most full coverage I've seen, but I think it's a pretty decent amount. And it's not too, too matte to where it's not movable. Like it's still kind of like cooperating and going with the flow. Ooh, here comes Camilla again. Ooh, she's such a blocker. I actually think this concealer may be better applied with the brush because the sponge shears it out a little bit too much. Okay, so, so far I like my face, but I do feel like something's missing. I just need a little bit more. I need a little bit more something here. I have the Retouch and Erase concealers, one in the color Deep Honey, and then the other in the color Honey. You know that sponge tip applicator concealer that Maybelline has, the one that I can't use because they don't come in all shade that everybody raves about? Um, this actually reminds me of it, except this sponge tip applicator don't look that popping out. This is the color Honey, and she's really yellow. So I'm gonna put a little bit under my eye and see, hopefully it doesn't look too extraterrestrial. I think this is their more lightweight concealer, so I don't know, maybe these two will kind of mesh and create a really good combo. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. That added a little bit. I think a little bit of the extra coverage I needed. I did see a pressed translucent powder, but this one actually looks like it's more of like a glow. There's definitely a little bit of sheen in there and I'm not really comfortable using that under eye. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick to the Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder because she's reliable and right now, I, I need something that's a little reliable. Next, I'm gonna take the Easy Brow Automatic Pencil, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared of just cause brows are just, I don't know. I, I'm just really overprotective of the brows, okay? Here goes that dang on shrink wrap again. Why do y'all do this to pencils? Why do y'all get it together, invest the extra $2 on cardboard, and put them in these, okay? Okay, we get it. You don't want people to steal, but this is annoying, especially for people like me with nails. You have to like peel the thing off and then, oh my God, it's shrunk wrap on the whole thing. Like just do it halfway or something. Oh my God. After I fought, that very tragic battle. Now I was able to get inside the pencil. Oh, it's very chocolatey, very chocolatey. It's a very chocolatey brown and it's a dual ended stick. So you have the automatic where you can roll it up. Wait, it's not rolling up. It's not rolling. Is it the other way? Okay, this isn't doing nothing. It says automatic and you ain't automatically going nowhere. So I'm just trying to figure. 
Anyway, I thought it was a roll up pencil, but ain't no product being dispensed when you roll it up. So I'm confused. I'm genuinely confused. Like there's no instructions because somebody explained this to me. Anyway, this is the color dark brown. Oh, please Heavenly Father, please don't let this brow pencil mess up my brows. I got some place to go tonight. I did not accommodate looking ratchet. Please, please come through for me in Jesus name I pray, amen. Um, okay, so this is really unique. It's not, ugh. That just messed up my line. The problem that I have with this pencil is because it's so soft, you can't get a precise line. And I don't know why it's called the, I don't know why it's called, I don't know why it's sifted. I don't know why it's called the automatic pencil, but it don't automatically go nowhere. That's my concern, is it's just sitting there. It's not automatic. Your best line is always the first one because that's when the pencil is the sharpest. So after that, what are you supposed to do? Grab your brow whiz? Like, what are you supposed to do, Milani? And this pencil is a pretty rich reddish brown. It's not an ashy brown. I like my brows to be a little bit more on the ashier side, especially when I'm wearing like pastel hair colors, like lavender and you know, you know how it says. It's an okay pencil. It's not really my cup of tea. It's not It's not bad, but it's also not the worst. So I guess it's just somewhere in the middle. I've retired from my concealer brow days, but today I'm actually gonna clean it up just a little bit. I, I do feel like it just needs to be done. Just a teen serve. I feel like my brows look like two Godiva chocolate pretzel. I don't like this color at all. Okay, this is the eyeshadow primer. I don't think I've used this product, but I know I've definitely seen it. I'm gonna spread that onto my eyelid. I went absolute ham on some of these Milani eyeshadows. They have these singles, which I've used for years. And some of these were recent discoveries, like these Fierce Foil Eyeshine. I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was expecting these to just be like regular shimmer eyeshadows, but they're actually like cream shadows and they don't have too bad of a payoff. Like, look at that purple though. It's got like silver reflex in there. Then they have like these eyeshadow quads, which will technically, they're not quads, but they're like, you know, full on little eyeshadow palette. This palette has all the mattes. I think I'm gonna need to create this look. It's the Earthy Elements and it's got some, you know, some oranges, some corals, some neutrals. Let's take this shade here and use that in our crease. It's been a while since I've done anything with the mattes from Milani. This isn't too bad. They are a little on the powdery side, like there's fallout all over the palette, but I'm not mad at that. I do kind of feel like these are the type of shadows if you blend them out too much, they'll disappear. So I'm just gonna very like, barely tapping my brush and start blending out around the edges. I'm gonna make sure I blend this well into the inner corner so we get a really nice shape to the eye. And then I'm going to the Fierce Foil eyeshadow. This is the purple palette. These purples look so pretty and so rich. And with my finger, I'm going to pop that onto my eyelid from inner to outer corner. You know what, I just realized this comes with an applicator too. Let's just see, let's just, just for fun, let's just see if we like how that applies it. Oh, you might've just did something, Milani. It's a silicone applicator, so it gets right in there and you can get like a really nice, precise cut crease shape. You might've just did something there. Cool. Now I'm switching to the all matte palette and I'm gonna take this dark, like a grayish blue color and I'm popping this into the outer corner of my eye. It's a really dark color, so be careful. And now I'm drawing a sidewards V shape around my outer corner. Switching over to one of their single shadows, I'm gonna take Bella Rouge. Bella Rouge. This look is getting very colorful, but this is what I wanted. This is what I came for. And I'm going to pop that into the center of my lid. So you get this ombre purple to pink effect. That purple acts really nicely as a base. Like it looks really pretty. I'm also blending Bella Rose into the crease. I found this Stay Put pencil liner. Never tried Milani's eyeliners, at least I don't think I have. This looks like it's a nice deep berry plum shade. Oh, this is a nice purple. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Going back to Bella Rouge, that smashing Bella Rouge. And I'm going to pop that on my bottom lash line. Ooh. Now when I really wanna smoke things up, I go back with my pencil brush and then start reapplying the shadow. Okay, my bad, I had to take a quick break because Postmates was here, don't judge me, all right? And I also took the time to add lashes. These are from Whiplash, the iconic lash. We went for something a little bold and thick. Next, I'm gonna add some bronzer, but Milani, I just have one question. What the, what the, what? 
what the hell is this? This is Milani's idea of bronzer, but take a look. This can't even bronze my pupil, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with. This is the darkest color that they had. Um, Moving, yeah, moving moving on. I did, however, manage to pick up the press pack. This packaging is gorgeous, first of all. It's not quite gold, it's not quite rose gold. It's somewhere in the, there's a name for this color. It's almost like a taupe gold. I don't know, but it's just stunning, stunning. This is their press powder in the color Earth Glow, but honestly, I feel like this looks more like a bronzer than a face powder. It's quite red, almost like the color of clay. Oh. This was unexpected. This looks almost exactly like my Bobbi Brown deep bronzer. Like they look exactly, they look exactly the same. Oh snap, dupe alert. Accidental dupe come through. She's a little red, but it's cool. We can work with it, but it's okay. We can work with it. I'm actually quite happy with that as a bronzer. That's not bad. I do, however, feel like I'm already starting to get oily, so. And that's not good. My hands are so ashy. This is actually, they should just, de they should honestly deactivate my YouTube channel. If you could see how ashy my hands are, you would report my channel. That's what you would do. This is sad. To know Jackie Ina is to know that she loves her some Milani baked blushes, girl. This is a pretty bright pink. It's in the color Dolce Pink. And I'm just going to pink it up a little bit. Now, it's my first time trying this one. This one is absolutely gorgeous. What I like about their baked blushes is they have like the highlight already there. So you don't have to add highlight if you don't want to, which is nice. Okay, I feel 10 times more like myself now that I've eaten. I will never film on an empty stomach ever again. I can't believe Dolce Pink has really been sitting in my collection not being used this whole time because this color is bomb. My usual favorite for pink looks is Berry Amore, but I think it's time to replace that one. I've had it for a while and it's like dried up. Berry Amore is so hard to find. I'm just waiting for me to run up on it at a CVS or Walgreens because I, I will be snatching. I will be snatching. These strobe light glowing situ I've never seen these. These are freaking gorgeous though. They don't swatch all that great. Like they're a little, not chalky. They're just not as soft as I would like them to be, but you know. Not everything swatches as well as it performs or vice versa. This is in the color number four. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. Ooh. Oh, that's so pretty. And that looks even prettier with Dolce Pink. Now, it wouldn't be a Jackie O look without inner corner highlight. And to kind of coordinate and tie this all together, I'm also gonna add that strobe light right in that tear duct. Yes. Okay. If there's one thing that I have a love hate relationship with regarding Milani, it is their lip products. On one hand, their Amore Matte Lip Creams, I think have one of the best liquid lipstick selections at the drugstore. But the formula is so drying. Like I, it's, I, I can't, I can't. I feel like if I put these liquid lipsticks on and I draw a match to them, it'll start a fire. Like they're, they're dry. They're not the worst. Okay, maybe they're one of the worst, but they could be worse, sir. But they also, Definitely could be way better. But I still use them because I really like the colors and they smell so good. Why? Why? Their lipsticks on the other hand, 12 out of 10 would highly recommend. I even like everything all the way down the packaging. They just look so luxe and bougie. I think Milani was always that like sneak peek into what it felt like to like not be broke for a little bit when I would use their stuff. And back then that was kind of nice for me, you know? Like it's nice to have, even though you, I couldn't necessarily always get every new high-end launch, but it was just nice that Milani had something that looked the part and was still good quality at the same time. I'm not gonna use the lipsticks. I'm actually going to be using the liquid lipsticks. I just wanted to shout out the lipsticks. If you haven't tried them, please do. They're amazing. All right, what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna use Obsession and gorgeous for this look. And I did anticipate a desert Sahara, so I moisturized my lips first. I do like the applicator though. The applicator is really nice. It looks good, like it has so much potential, but I know that once this dries down, I'm just not happy with the formula. And then it also is one of those liquid lipsticks that starts to crumble. And I've experienced this with and without lip balm underneath. So for anyone that says you're supposed to do it on clean lips and blah, I've tried it all, nothing else, okay? All right, now in the middle, we're gonna put gorgeous. 
for that ombre look. I think these would be really nice if they just didn't dry down all the way, if they were kind of like that plush matte. They don't dry all the way down, they don't set, but they still move. I don't mind that. I don't, it doesn't have to necessarily be transfer proof. I mean, that's nice, but it's not necessarily needed. I definitely feel like they should work on their liquid lipstick formula. Everything else is perfect from the applicator, the smell, the color selection, the coverage you get, like they're bomb. They're just not that comfortable for me. Or I don't know, maybe I've just been spoiled into trying some other brands that I really, really like. And the metallic ones are even more crusty. Like they're crusty. Stay crusty, but the colors are so bomb. So here's the final look. It's very colorful. What do you guys think? I came across these Stellar Lights holographic glosses. They look really cool. They're just like a frosted glitter gloss. I'm gonna put that in the center. I think that's just what this look was missing. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh my God, that is so bomb. And they smell like, so good. Now this feels like a look. Do you hear that? I guess they having a town hall meeting in my lobby, I guess. Now I do feel a little bit of a tingling from the gloss. I'm unfortunately not gonna be wearing this look for very long and I'll tell you why. It's not because I don't like the look. I actually really like the look and I've been dying to do something with pink, like bright pink for a while now. So be on the lookout for that because I got another pink, a really cute pink look that I wanna do. I'm going to an ugly sweater Christmas party tonight and it calls for a more laid back look. So I don't wanna just bam, you know, like, hey, Kool-Aid all up in the party situation looking like carnival, you know, looking like Mardi Gras. I'm actually gonna go to Target and try to find a onesie for this party, but I'm gonna keep the makeup on. Do you guys wanna come? Okay, fine, just let's go, grab the keys, sis. <laughs> yeah, you guys, it's been about an hour and I actually feel like I look really good. This makeup is gonna be a little loud for Target, but they just gonna have to take what they can get, okay? You lucky I'm wearing clothes, let alone all this five pounds of makeup. How about that? Yo, I don't know who sent me these green juice gummy bears, but these are so freaking good. I know they're probably lying. Ain't no green juice in here. Mm, so good. It hasn't been very long, but it is just before 9 p.m. Come on camera, focus, focus, focus. Oh, right when I do it, there we go, boom. I can tell right off the bat this is not gonna be a long wearing foundation for me. It does look good, but before I even finished my face, the oil was already peeking through. And this is now hour like two or three of wearing it and she's starting to already drip, drippity drop around the pores area. And the fact that I've been wearing this and it's not even that hot says a lot bars, hashtag that. So if the Milani brand primer doesn't work with the foundation, then it's either just not the right foundation for me or it's just not a good foundation, period, okay. My favorite part I think ended up being the highlight. The highlight looks really good. I already feel a way about the eyeshadows. I think they're amazing quality and they're blush and cheek products. Like if they could just get everything on par to the blushes and the highlights, we could be, we could be going places, Milani, we really could. And fix them shades, them shades need some work, okay? I've been licking my lips nonstop all night. And that says a lot considering the fact that I'm wearing gloss, but they are still, even with gloss on top, they're still so dry and still, they feel cracky and uncomfortable and like just the rim around my lips, like this color looks so good and it hasn't budged, but I'm ready to take it off, girl. You know, other than that, I actually do think Milani is worth your coin. Some things are gonna be hit or miss. If you are on the deeper, darker spectrum, you are going to have a hard time finding the complexion products to work for you. I definitely feel like that's something that they need to start working on even more. And maybe put a little bit of vitamin E in those liquid lipsticks or something, you know, so I don't have to keep wetting my palette. Like, I just need a little bit of moisture. My skin does look really good though. They can definitely keep the brows. The brows was just not, no, whatever it was, whatever it is, I don't want it, okay? And the bronzers, we gotta do better than this. I can't even bronze the palm of my hands with this color. Thank you guys for joining me on yet another full face one brand tutorial. Hopefully I'll see you on the next video. And I mean, I guess since you made it to the end, you might as well click the next video. You over there trying to pretend like you getting ready to go somewhere. You ain't getting ready. You watching beauty gurus, ain't you? I know you are. 
Mm -hmm. You ain't slick. So anyway, you know what to do. I'm gonna just wait. I'm gonna just wait on it. I'll just put it right here. Mm -hmm. You know what to do. 